All right, Dr. Lola, let's have it. I want my ship clean again. If you know the person, man or woman, who killed Ben Miller, then speak up. Passage of the Tangma. The story of a ship and its cargo of death. Very well, Captain Goddard. As you know, Major Challoner was in England with the rest of us when Peter Slavin was killed. But at six o'clock this morning, he wasn't in his cabin. It's my belief he was on the boat deck stabbing Ben Miller to death. There was a calmness about Dr. Lawler's statement that impressed me. It was as if he'd completed a diagnosis on a patient and was left with the unpleasant task of breaking the bad news. Major Challoner, who'd refused to explain his movements that morning. Major Challoner, who had made no secret of his dislike for everything connected with the Tangmo. As the doctor finished speaking, I found myself wondering if that obvious dislike had been a cloak for something deeper. An irresistible urge to gain the Wherryman million for himself. But there was one thing wrong with the doctor's theory. Not half an hour before, I'd been attacked on deck by a man I'd been unable to see in the darkness. But I was sure of one thing. My attacker had not been Major Challoner. Captain Goddard was almost biting through the stem of his pipe as he waited impatiently for my reaction. Well, dash it, Kendall. Say something, man. Here you've got the whole thing solved, dumped in your lap. All we've got to do is shove the Major in the brig... Now, wait a minute. Dr. Lolo, how do you know the Major wasn't in his cabin this morning? I can't tell you that. But I assure you my information is correct. I see. Have you spoken to the Major about this? Yes, just now on deck. That's why I've come to you. When I faced Challoner with what I knew, he claimed he was in his cabin. I believe he was lying. Well, that's all very well, but who told you this? Come on, Lawler. Sooner or later you'll have to tell us, you know. Then I'm afraid it will have to be later. You saw the Major on deck. Have you any idea how long he'd been there? Oh, some little time, I imagine. I was talking to his... Uh, to one of the passengers who told me that he was on deck. And how long ago were you talking to Miss Challoner? Oh, about half an hour, I suppose. I didn't say it was... But it was Miss Challoner. And it was Miss Challoner who told you her father wasn't in his cabin this morning. Is that right, Doctor? <laughs> yes, for an amateur sleuth, you're pretty quick off the mark, Kendall. And she let it slip and then tried to cover up. And if Major Challoner were on deck half an hour ago, he must have heard the struggle when I was attacked, Captain Goddard. You were attacked? By a fellow with a knife. I couldn't see him, but I was pretty sure until now that it was one of the crew. Anyone could put on a seaman's vest, Kendall. When was this? About half an hour ago. Did you say the Major was still on deck? Yes. I think it's time I took the gloves off with that gentleman. Oh, don't worry, Doctor. I'll keep Sharon Challoner's name out of it. Ah, you drink, Miss Fedorov. Thank you. I'm amazed to find such a civilized drink as vodka on this ship. Oh, we don't usually carry it, Miss, but, uh, well, uh, I believe it was fixed up before we left. Orders from Jamaica. The passengers were to have every comfort. Wonderful. I don't know how you can be so calm, Miss Fedorov, sitting there drinking That's when... all, Stuart. Right, Miss. There is no need to let the crew see how frightened you are, Mr. Tuker. Oh, Stuart! Uh, yes, miss? What is your name? Uh, Henry, miss. Well, Henry, I should like you to attend to my needs for the rest of the trip. You can start by tidying up my cabin. Yes, miss. <laughs> I feel that a good-looking steward is so important, don't you, Mr. Eleanor? I've never really thought about it. No. <laughs> no, I don't suppose you have. Or if you have, your father would see that such thoughts were never aired more than once. Miss Fader. To you, my dear. <laughs> you know, 
If you would only take the trouble, you could be such an attractive child. I think that's a most unpleasant thing to say, Miss Faderoff. So, at last, we hear our frightened little passenger in a new role. Oh, it is a change. <laughs> you found a protector, a champion, Miss Chelena. Haven't we got enough on our minds without being unpleasant to each other? I've no doubt you have a great deal on your mind, Mr. Tuker. Tell me, why is it that you found the courage to leave your cabin tonight and join us in the lounge? I should have thought that after the affair of poor Mr. Miller, you would have locked yourself in. Well, it, uh, it's nice in here. Company. Oh, how flattering. Doesn't it matter to you at all, Miss Faderoff, that this man was killed? It means that I am much richer, that's all. I didn't kill the poor fellow. And poor Mr. Tuker is so frightened of his own shadow, I can't see him in the role of murderer. Can't you? Can you, Miss Chelena? Mr. Tuker, don't take any notice of her. Ever since I came aboard, Miss Faderoff... Ilona, please. Miss Faderoff sounds so formal. Miss Faderoff, ever since I joined this ship, you've made fun of me. I'm frightened. I, I, I'm very frightened. Not for the reason you think. I did kill someone once. Mr. Tuker! Oh, don't be alarmed, Miss Chelena. I stayed in my cabin only because I know perfectly well that the police would regard me as a, an obvious suspect. You see... I've been in prison. Oh, very interesting. <laughs> you have quite an imagination, Mr. Tuker. Edwin. You can find out if I'm telling the truth very easily, Miss Fedorov. You've only to ask Mr. Kendall and Mr. Blake. They know. Oh, imagine. A killer who falls overboard. Oh, very funny. <laughs> or have you made up your mind yet that one of us pushed you? Oh, don't keep making fun of me, please. I'm not very proud of what I did in the past. I... I have to live with it. What did you do? You don't have to tell us. We... But I do. You'd find out anyway. My... my first wife. I poisoned her. Yes. I imagine that you wouldn't have the courage for anything else but poison. I loved her so much when we were first married. I... But she made fun of me. She made fun of me too. She never stopped. It was always what a funny little man I was. And then as the years passed, I knew that she'd begun to... To hate me. She didn't even try to please me anymore. Not even in little things. It's just that I think table manners are so important. And she knew that. She used to enjoy upsetting me at the table. Mr. It doesn't matter now, because the way she ate her soup that proved the final straw. Noisily. Day after day. And watching me to see if I was noticing and then laughing. <laughs> If you'll excuse me, I think I'll go to my cabin. Uh, Mr. Tuker, are you married now? Yes. Does she know? Yes. And she doesn't mind being married to a poisoner? No. Oh, uh, before you go. Yes. I promise you that we shall all watch our table manners very carefully, just in case. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Tuker. Good night. <laughs> Do you enjoy doing that kind of thing? Only to the unattractive ones, my dear. Oh, are you going? I'd like to keep my temper. Uh, then as you pass my cabin, would you tell Henry that I'm ready for another vodka? Looking for me, Mr. Kendall? Yes. I thought you might be. I've been around the deck three times, Major Chaloner, and down to your cabin. Yes, I know. I saw you headed this way the first time, but I wanted to enjoy my own company a little longer, so I ducked out of sight. But here I am. I imagine you know why I want to talk to you. I'm afraid so. Dr. Lawler claims that you weren't in your cabin this morning when Miller met his death. Is that true? It might be. Look, I'm tired of sparring with you, Major. You've been going out of your way to make things difficult ever since we left Sydney. I want an answer to my question, and I want it now. Very well. I wasn't in my cabin. Where were you? I have answered your question, Mr. Kendall. <laughs> Incidentally, that was quite a fight you put up. My congratulations. You saw it? Yes. You wouldn't be lying about that, too. By that, I mean, Major Chaloner, that it might have been you with the knife. <laughs> I assure you it was not. And in case you're wondering why I didn't interfere, let me point out that I do not believe in being involved in brawls between common sailors. I see. In other words, I could have been killed and you wouldn't have lifted a finger. Very succinctly put. And completely accurate. I intend to reach Jamaica alive, Kendall. And by coming to your assistance, I just might have been hurt. 
I weighed your probable fate against my share of a million pounds. And you finished a bad second. If you managed to recognize me, then you must have recognized my attacker. Sorry. If you were up here at the stern, you must have seen him as he ran away. No, I kept out of sight. Not even a glimpse? Sorry. All right, Major, now get this straight. Either you account for your movements this morning, or you're going to have a long time to enjoy your own company in the ship's brig. You'll have all the solitude you require. Mr. Kendall, do you really think that if I'd killed Miller, I'd have gone out of my way to report his death? It was I who discovered him. I'm waiting, Major. Where were you at six this morning? In the dim light, I watched Major Challoner's pale, lined face as he leaned over the stern rail, seemingly immersed in the creaming wake. We were three days out with thousands of miles to go. Miles in which a killer might strike again in this passage of the Tangmar.